The Israel-Palestine debate has been going on for decades, with both sides claiming ownership of this land often with catastrophic results, with the hardest hit being ordinary civilians who want to lead normal lives. So what is the genesis of this conflict that spans over generations? In the 17th century BC, three patriarchs of the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, settled in a region approximating present-day Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. This region was named Canaan, the land of Israel, or the Holy Land. In 1000 BC, King Saul established the United Monarchy, which then was ruled by King David, who made Jerusalem the capital of his kingdom. His son King Solomon built the first temple in Jerusalem. After the death of King Solomon, the United Monarchy was split into the Kingdom of Israel in the north, with Samaria as the capital, and the Kingdom of Judah in the south, with Jerusalem as the capital. Majority of Jews dwelled in these lands, but then it was subject to numerous conquests of various groups leading to the significant decrease of the Jewish population. One major conquest was conducted by the Roman Empire. They renamed the Kingdom of Judah to Palestine. During this time, Christianity, which started as a Jewish sect, ultimately became a dominant religion toward the end of the Roman Empire. In the 7th century, the Arab conquest came, and thus begun the spread of Islam. The Dome of the Rock was built in Jerusalem, making this a holy city to three monotheistic religions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. At this point Jerusalem was under the Seljuk Empire, leading to the persecution of Christians in the region. Upon hearing about this, Christians in Europe launched several crusades to bring the holy city back to the hand of the Christians. At this time many Jews were making pilgrimages mostly in Western Europe. From the 16th century to World War I, the Holy Land, along with much of the Middle East, was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, which had Islamic roots. The Holy Land was now called Palestine. The borders of Palestine changed drastically over time, and this region became home to Palestinians for centuries to come. By the late Ottoman Empire, Palestinians living here, who were often referred to as Arabs, were overwhelmingly Muslim, with minority Christian and Jewish populations. By the time World War I began, several key things were happening in this land. First, there was a growing Arab political movement looking for independence from the Ottoman Empire in hopes of a unified Arab state that would include Palestine. Second, there was the growth of Zionists, a nationalist movement founded by Theodore Herzl that emerged in the 19th century to espouse support for the establishment of a homeland for the Jewish people in Palestine, the region roughly corresponding to the land of Israel in Jewish tradition, and which many Jews believed to be their historic homeland. But there was a third key group, the British, who wanted to protect trade routes to India but had one stumbling block, the Ottomans. During World War I, since both the British and the Arab independence movement had mutual interests, which was to free Palestine, they decided to go after the Ottomans together. It was agreed in 1916 that if Arabs would help the British fight the Ottomans, the British would recognize and support an independent Arab state and so the Arabs started revolting against the Ottomans. But in the next year, the British issued a new declaration known as the Balfour Declaration. This supported the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. All this was done without consulting the native Palestinian population who had helped fight off the Ottomans. The plan changed from having Palestine as part of a unified and independent Arab state to helping secure this land for Zionists. This left Palestinians with a deep sense of betrayal from the British. After World War I ended, Britain gained control of Palestine through a mandate that also required them to act upon the Balfour Declaration. And so between 1922 and 1931, the Zionist movement gained steam, and they moved into Palestine. A popular slogan took off, a land without people. 
for a people without land. Then, the world saw the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party, and this acted as a catalyst, bringing the biggest wave of Jewish immigration into Palestine. Jewish settlers purchased chunks of fertile land and evicted tenant farmers, leaving hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Arabs landless. Seeing this, Palestinians rebelled against both British forces and Jewish settlers, but despite them being overpowered and the British training and arming Zionist militias to suppress the rebellion, the Palestinian rebellion continued. In an attempt to prevent further Palestinian resistance, the British began to limit Jewish immigration into Palestine. This move angered Zionist extremists, leading to more violence. So in 1947, Britain handed over the Palestine issue to the United Nations. A UN special committee proposed the land be divided into two states, a Jewish state and an Arab state, with Jerusalem as a separate UN-controlled region. The Jews accepted this plan, but Palestinians rejected it, since it proposed giving over half the land and often the most fertile areas to the Jewish state. The population of Palestinians at this time doubled that of the Jews, and so the partition plan didn't make much sense for Palestinian Arabs. It also did not take into consideration that within the proposed areas of the Jewish state were hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Arabs, including both Muslims and Christians who had lived there for generations. In November 1947, the UN voted in favor of the partition plan, and by this time, Zionists had several well-developed paramilitary forces, most notably the Haganah. They set in motion, Plan Dalit. The aim was to gain control of the Jewish state as laid out in the partition plan while also defending Jewish settlements outside of the borders. This led to the evacuation of Palestinians and destruction of their villages to prevent them from coming back. One key village was Deir Yassin, where brutal atrocities were carried out in the name of evacuations. A UN report indicated women and children were stripped, lined up, photographed, and then slaughtered. The news of what happened in Deir Yassin spread far and naturally induced fear in Palestinians. Zionist militias, on the other hand, used this to their advantage to drive out more Palestinians from their homes. This became to be known as Al-Nakba. Zionist paramilitaries were carrying out the ethnic cleansing of historic Palestine to make room for a new state. After taking Deir Yassin, Zionist paramilitary groups cleared major cities, including Haifa and Jaffa. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were forced to flee into neighboring states as refugees, and on May 14, the day before the British mandate in Palestine ended, Zionists declared the state as Israel. Due to an influx of Palestinian refugees, neighboring Arab countries joined forces and went to war with Israel. But Israel won the war and grew beyond the UN partition lines. During peace negotiations, the Green Line ceasefire line was drawn, demarcating the state of Israel, and regions such as the West Bank, controlled by Jordan at this time. The ceasefire remained until 1967 when Israel fought another war with its Arab neighbors, called the Six-Day War, which saw it occupy more territory, including the West Bank, and with it came tough decisions. Do they make the West Bank a part of Israel? and give the Arabs living there Israeli citizenship and voting rights? Do they give the land back to their enemy Jordan? Or do they let the people create their own Palestinian state? This became a major debate in Israeli politics. And while the government was in discussions, Israeli civilians began moving into the West Bank without a green light from the government, establishing a Jewish presence in this region. This complicated matters as any decision made about the West Bank had to take into account the growing number of Israeli civilians that were living there. The UN issued a resolution saying that this movement into the West Bank was illegal. And so the debate began, were Jewish civilians moving on to mostly empty plots of land that they had captured in a war and that had deep historical and spiritual significance to them? Or were these settlers colonizing land to expand their nation? All along, the number of settlers in the West Bank grew. 
the Israeli government granted permits for buildings and construction of roads throughout the entire region for easy access between settlements and mainland Israel. Palestinians didn't like this encroachment, and they began violently protesting. In the mid-1990s, U.S. President Bill Clinton, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat signed the Oslo Accords, agreements that established a Palestinian government and split the West Bank into three sections, Area A, which gave Palestinians total control over security and government, this makes up about 18% of the West Bank. Area B, designated for Palestinian government control while retaining Israeli security control. Area B is about 22% of the West Bank. And Area C, which remained completely under the Israeli military and government control. This is where majority of the Jewish settlements are, and is about 60% of the West Bank. In 2005, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon decided to remove Israeli settlers from the Gaza Strip, majority of who went to settle in the West Bank. Since 2007, after a brief war against Fardoff forces loyal to President Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority and Palestine Liberation Organization, the Gaza Strip has been under Hamas, an Islamic resistance movement founded in Gaza in 1987 by Sheikh Ahmed Yassin and Abdulaziz al-Rantisi, shortly after the start of the First Intifada, an uprising against Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories. Hamas refuses to recognize Israel and wants the return of a fully Palestinian state. The history of Israel and Palestine is deeply rooted in complex narratives and events that have now shaped the current ongoing conflict and suffering of people in these regions.